Can everybody hear me? All right. So what I wanted to pre present today was decrypting SSL traffic. Um, in the, well, let's just, I'll start, I guess. So this is, this is me. I'm a husband, four kids, programmer, data analyst, knife maker, over analytical person who doesn't always think things through. Just kind of who I am, I'm sure I relate to some of you out there. Um, my name is Daniel Tawali, um, and let's go over some, some exercises. Can everybody raise your hand? Can you raise your hand a little bit? All right, good. Okay, can, can you stand up? Sorry, I, 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 sp I suppose I know that you all can. Will you all stand up? All right, so my idea of, of the, so you, sorry, you can sit down now. My idea with this was a workshop, and so I wanted to be able to, to interact with, with people and wanted to make sure that other people can interact with other people to make sure that, um, that we get this understood. Um, so let's begin. I had seen online that it was possible to to use your browser to decrypt the, the traffic that you're sending back and forth. Because if you open up Wireshark when you're trying to do this, then it doesn't it doesn't catch it. It doesn't know what's going on. So these slides are available on um, through the conference. So if you want to take a picture of this, you can. If you want to download the PDF and then click on the link, you can. Um, but I always had problems actually getting it to work. I, I would follow the different steps and then things just weren't working. So I decided, I found this and this actually helped me um, to do what I wanted to do. So I'm going to steal a bunch of his stuff. Um, and so on that link, you go to, he shows you this um, this example of Wireshark of some SSL traffic that he that he has, and it's all just jumbled up. And so then, so I guess let's go back. So I tried to um, I had a server that was that was using SSL, and I was able to get the the private key because well you know I own it I manage it, and I tried to use that private key then to put it into to Wireshark and then try to see the traffic in my web browser and so it, it, it still it still didn't work. So apparently they they use the the certificates to create some sort of pre master key and then it's that that secondary session key that then is uh, transferred back and forth or used to encrypt the traffic back and forth. And so that's why I couldn't do it. The, um, there's a resource slide that I have at the end of this that explains in more detail about how to do this and why it works and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, Firefox and Chrome, I, I know they work. I don't know about any other browser. Um, so what, what happens is you, can, you have an environment variable that you set, and then when the browser goes to some SSL site or it starts up, then it says, okay, I'm gonna dump my SSL keys to, um, to the file that you specified in the environment variable. Um, so depending on how you do it, you may have to um, start your web browser from a, from a terminal if you're Mac or Linux. If you're Windows, this should just kind of work. So let's kind of do some experiments and try to get this to work. 
Um, yeah. So who here has a, a Windows machine in front of them? Okay. And so this, these next couple slides will be for you to um, help you go through the, the process. A lot of us have done environment variables. This is the name. It has to be all caps, and it has to be specifically SSL key log file. And then you tell it where to go. Is that it? Oh, okay. So, so I wanted to make sure that everyone has everyone who wanted to do this has they had the time to do it. Okay. And then if you're on a Mac or Linux, these are the ways to do it. So if you, in, in here, if you do export SSL log key file, log file, then you have to um, use Firefox from within the terminal, and then it'll dump it. That was where I was having issues before. I was doing the, the export and then trying to start Firefox from my, um, that was already open, that was already started, and so then that didn't, it wasn't dumping the file. Uh, it looks like if you do the, the bash rc file and you put the the uh, variable in there and then uh, log out log back in maybe restart firefox then that will come up and that'll work and then with mac it's a similar situation i know that it works in vim i don't know about emacs i don't you know I don't really know much about Emacs. Um, and then, so has everybody who wanted to gotten this far? Is there a raise of hands of someone who wanted to do this but couldn't couldn't do it? So it's very possible that we will get done early because I was expecting more interactions more trial and error, um, heavy on the error side. Um, in theory, all of this is fine. It's just if you don't go through it, then you may hit snags and stuff, and it's better if you hit the snags with a lot of help around you. But yeah. So then in Wireshark, you go edit, Preferences, and you go into the protocol section, SSL, and then that's where you put the, you browse to the file that was dumped. If it's not dumping things, then you don't have anything to put here. Uh, I don't remember what that is. And then, so after that, after you go, you do that, and then you can open up the um, the PCAP again, and then you'll see an, an extra tab that wasn't there before, and it's called decrypted SSL data. So then you can see the the data that goes back and forth with that. These are my resources. This is the one that I that I found that actually helped me to to get this to work. This is the one from Mozilla that says, "Hey, this is what this is how you do it. This is I, yeah, this is, it can be done." And I knew that for a while. I just couldn't figure out how. And then this is another one from. Uh, from SANS that kind of gives you a, a higher overview. Uh, I mean, 
a similar situation to to what I've explained, maybe in a little bit more detail. And then this one is like a 20-page white paper on on how to do this, and delves into more of the details. And that's my presentation. I I wasn't expecting a presentation, but more of a demonstration, so if, yes? Back? You, you specify. It, but it needs to be something that um, that, wire should, that a Firefox can write to, and then it needs to be something that you can access with uh, uh, with Wireshark. Mm -hmm. Correct. So it'll, it'll spit out a bunch of different keys in that file. <laughs> you have different um, different websites and stuff, and so then that does different um, has a different key. Uh, if they talk a different protocol, then you may have a couple keys in there for the same um, for the same website, but it's all in that same file. So if you take that file and throw it into Wireshark then it will help you to decrypt it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is not a... Yeah, I, it's not that you're accepting a different cert. You're just, you're, everything is just normal. As far as cert's concerned, you're just seeing what the cert is, and then using that to decrypt the traffic. Are there any more questions? Yes. So, in in Vim or VI? Yes. So the question is, what when you use Vim um, in this environment variable or in this place here, what do you put into the file? You would just use this same text right sorry. The same text right here. SSL key log file equals and then that. Yeah. So that's that that means it'll persist over restarts. And then um, it's it's safe if you write to this file, write that SSL keylog thing, and then um, log out, log back in, and then it'll be there, and you should be able to um, dump these files. So is there anyone that has attempted to do this and has gotten stuck? Go. Is there anyone that's working on it? Good. Um, so, I yesterday I found out that Burp Suite will um, will have a um, create a, a CA certificate for Burp Suite, and then you can use that as a proxy, and then you can then see the traffic if you're say um, trying to troubleshoot something that you own, that, that you know is going to, um, you, you're going to trust that, that CA cert, then, then you can use Burp Suite. That's maybe a little bit easier than this. The, the major issue 
that that I see with this is the environment variables can be changed without really you knowing. And so this could then be done so that your SSL keys are being logged to a file without you knowing. So there is evidence of it happening, and that's that, um, that environment variable. So if you know that it's there, and you say, that shouldn't be there, then you can go through the same process and just delete it if it is there. So are there still people working on it? That's what this time is for. There's not much more content. So if you are disinterested with everything else, then you're free to go. Give some questions. So who thinks that they understand this and they could possibly help someone else out? Okay, so if, could you, those that, um, could you stand up if you think you understand it and you could help, possibly help someone out, could you, will you please stand up? And then if, if you need help, then could you raise your hand and then um, someone else here could, could help you out? So either we're all pretty confident in our skills, or we don't want to admit that we need help. And, and either way is fine. It's all personal preference.